Hi, this is Eric Miller, um, and in this TD College Tech Byte, um, I'm going to show you how to set up a very basic jaw joint, um, and uh, we're going to skin it to the face, and then I'm going to show you how to drive a, uh, a corrective shape using a couple techniques. Um, we'll use a set-driven key, and we'll also use an expression, and I'm just going to walk through this process, um, you know, sort of starting from scratch, and, uh, and you know, let you guys... Uh, let everyone see, uh, you know, all the steps uh, along the way. Um, so uh, first, we should start out with this uh, human model. Um, this is a excellent model, modeled by Sven Jensen, a very talented modeler. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and go in the side view here, and we're going to look at the uh, look at the face, and we'll go in the front view as well. We're going to look at the face, and what we're going to do is just going to create a few joints. Um, now, you know, we're not going to create a full facial rig, uh, but I wanted to show uh, this this uh, the jaw joint technique, which is, I think, pretty important to have a jaw joint uh, as opposed to just having jaw blunt shapes. Um, and, uh, you know, that's because of the way that a skin cluster will transform a uh, jaw and uh, apply rotations um, to it as opposed to just a linear, um, linear motion. And uh, well, we start out, we'll just draw down a few joints for the neck. And these are just placeholders. This is just a placeholder joints. Um, so we don't have to worry too much about joint placement, but, you know, we don't want it to be totally wrong. Um, and, uh, and we can set that one there, and then we'll just make one up here for the head and click enter. Um, so we have the, the placeholder uh, uh, neck joints, and then we're going to go ahead and make a, take another joint here. And we want to make a, um, we're going to make a connector joint, which is uh, something that's going to kind of connect up to the neck. Um, and then we want to make our jaw joint. So make a jaw joint uh, right about here. Now the thing with the jaw is you can see anatomically, um, if I go into a shaded mode, you can see anatomically where the jaw is. Uh, generally the jaw position um, is somewhere kind of along the line from the earlobe and the corner of the mouth. There's this region here. If you trace the corner of the mouth uh, or the corner of the nose back to the earlobe and you trace the, ear, the bottom of the earlobe down to the chin, um, there's this area in here, this sort of convergence area, and that's usually about the best place for a jaw to go. Um, and you always end up playing with your pivots um, along the way. And we'll just put the jaw, let's put it right about there. And then um, for the purpose of this example, we're just going to uh, create a single joint down here at the chin as well. All right, now we're going to hit enter. And let's, uh, we have those joints. So we're going to take this joint and uh, parent it to that joint by hitting the key key. And you can see now that uh, this is a parent relationship. And um, if we go over here back into perspective mode now, we have, uh, we have some joints. So, um, you know, since we're not looking at the whole body of this guy, I'm just going to um, delete some of, these, uh, some of this model here before we go too far, before I start skinning. Um, and this is just for purposes of example. Um, let me delete those spaces. All right. Now we just have a head, and it'll be a little easier to work with. Um, and uh, and I might as well clean this up a little bit. Um, just clean up this space. Clean, hit delete key. There we have our, our head model there. And um, we'll uh, take a look at this model. Before we run a bind, we'll just do a quick complete history and a uh, freeze transformation. All right, so we're going to grab this, uh, this whole hierarchy. We're just going to bind everything. Uh, so we'll select the head and do skin, and bind skin, smooth bind, and uh, instead of selected joints, we'll use all joint hierarchy, which is the default, and uh, just do max influences of two, and um, yeah, that'll be good. If you turn off maintain max influence, just click apply, and now we have something that looks a little crazy. Um, and so that's the default skin weighting of Maya. And what we want to do is we want to go and sort of fix that. So one of the easiest ways to uh, to quickly isolate out um, um, painted weights is to use UVs, but uh, there are no UVs in this model. 
So what we want to do is we want to just rotate this jaw down a little bit, and we're going to quickly uh, quickly select some of the vertices on the face, on the lips, and we're going to uh, sort of flood those guys back up to the head. And so we have this joint here, which is joint five, and we're going to go to the uh, skeleton, uh, sorry, the skin, edit smooth skin, uh, paint skin weights tool, and we're going to replace those with a value of one and opacity of one. Um, and that should be going to joint five. Okay, so um, next we're going to want to go in here and come back a little bit like this. And uh, I'm going to turn on um, show wireframe so we can see the wireframe. And we're just going to paint in with a, uh, a full-fledged uh, no-fall-off brush here and get, get some of these points that aren't quite lining up, that weren't really weighted well. And this is kind of the, you know, this is the, this is the starting up point of skinning ahead. This is sort of how it goes. You know, you can get better weights, a default weights, if you can transfer weights from a uh, templated model that has, from a model that has already weights painted on it. Uh, that's a good place to start as well. But uh, typically, you kind of have to dive in there and really start uh, start painting down what you want and what you need. Um, and uh, sometimes you use the uh, the spreadsheet uh, weight spreadsheet editor as well. Um, but uh, it's easy enough to paint. Um, paint weights in Maya, so I'm just going to use that technique as we get things going. And you can see this little guy here, this pin butt, get him out of there by clicking around. And this might be something that we might want to open a, a spreadsheet editor for, but we got him. And we're just going to zoom into the mouth a little bit, take a look at what's going on here, and get these lips painted in of the mouth a little bit and just kind of get some of these points assigned to the upper portion of the head. So now we should start to see the mouth looking like it's opening a little bit. Um, and we want to go to the jaw now. And we want to get bring some of these uh, lower lip weights back in. So once we have something uh, that's starting to work, and it's uh, starting to get a little bit, starting to get a little bit separated here. Kind of pull, pull these, uh, pull these points down. And what we're doing is we're basically segregating the uh, points either on, onto the jaw. So they're assigned to the jaw, or they're assigned to the uh, to the head. And this is the simplest of a jaw setup. That you can do multi you can do multi bone jaw setups and do other things as well. But we're going to stick with this for now. And then uh, if we do a couple smooth floods, we should start to see uh, start to see it smoothing out a little bit. So it's a little bit less tricky. Um, and we'll go back to joint five. And uh, as you can see, you can probably imagine the process here. Um, as, we're, as we're going through, we're starting to s separate out the, uh, the weights. 